All right, good morning or good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to the Blunts Creek Garage. Today we're going to be um, showing you what we found in the block teardown as well as the tools we're going to use to uh, get this block uh, ready to run. Uh, here's the basic tools. Today we'll be using a uh, just a flex home uh, it's for the appropriate bore size of four inch for that motor. And we've got a couple cans of degreaser some um, spray oil WD-40 for the honing process also a can of the knockoff uh, Walmart WD-40 some oven cleaner if we have some uh, real tough stuck on grease a uh, 4 inch grinder with a wire brush I would prefer a brass bristle brush but I don't have one of those it's just steel I'm just using that for uh, any tough stuck on stuff uh, grease on the block and to knock off any rust scale. I will not be using that on any mating surfaces such as the deck of the block um, or where the water pump and all mates to the to the block as that will mess up the gasket seal possibly distorting the surface. Um, for surfaces such as the deck and um, the water pump mating area as well as the oil pan rails uh, just your basic gasket scraper with a razor blade will work much better for that. And then you'll need uh, just some cleanup brushes you can pick up at Harbor Freight, relatively inexpensive. I have a brass brush here as well as a steel brush, some safety glasses, a drill for the flex home. I'll be using that on the fastest setting and uh, going uh, pretty much at an in and out motion as quick as I can go. I'm trying to get some footage of that, but it may be difficult as I'm going to need one hand to spray oil in the bore while honing and um, one obviously to operate the drill. Uh, so then in addition to that, just some basic hand tools. You've got your, you'll need an 8 millimeter uh, uh, hex head, uh, adjustable wrench, and just uh, you know your basic socket set. Uh, really you just need a uh, 10 and a 14 10 millimeter holds the uh, crank position sensor and the <clears throat> oil sending unit use the adjustable wrench 8 millimeter will pull out all of your uh, oil plugs as well as uh, a water jacket plug and then you already had it out but you will uh, need a 18 millimeter to get out the main uh, water plug. These can be picked up at uh, your local auto parts store. And then, in addition, after we degrease the block, we've got some engine enamel, just Rust Oleum, 500 degree um, paint. I have two cans of it. I just have one set out here now. So let's go take a look at what we found at, found after tearing the block down. So we've got the block out here. Um, <clears throat> So you can see the main bearings, they all look pristine. Um, this is the front one, however, the back ones, as well as the thrust bearing, they all look, all look the same. Um, where the issue really arose, and I felt I needed to, uh, even though it costs a little bit of money, need to spend some attention on this area, is the cam bearings. You can see I've already knocked the first cam bearing out. I used uh, this tool purchased from Amazon. Um, you see here, I believe it was like $55. So this is the, the mandrel that fits on the end. This goes in the cam bore. It's big enough that the bearing here fits on the, the mandrel, but it doesn't slide. Um, it won't go past the lip at the back. However, this will go through the cam tunnel. So it allows you to knock, knock the bearing out. Before installing new bearings, I would recommend polishing this up a little bit, beveling the edge so you don't mark up the bearing as you can see um, in this. Uh, but for knocking the old ones out, uh, there's, there's no reason to do that yet. But before the, the new ones go in, I will polish that. Uh, knock any burrs off uh, just with some light sandpaper. Uh, probably something in the 400 to 600 grit range. And possibly a small file uh, to bevel the edge. 
But uh, that brings us to the uh, cam bearings. This is the first cam bearing and um, I could see from looking at it, I could see the copper tint there. I don't know if the camera is picking that up well. But essentially the cam has worn through all the Babbitt material and um, you can actually see the, the bearing surface there. You can see the scratch right there from the tool. You do not want to do that to the new cam bearings, but uh, just getting the old ones out don't really matter. You can see this, this finish here is rough and actually catches the nail. Um, these bearings are, are wore out. Um, same thing for the, the second bearing. Um, I've got the other, other uh, back three bearings still in the block. Um, I can try and get some footage of getting that out here in a minute uh, just to show you how that's done. Uh, essentially, we, we scrape on the block a little bit just to kind of check on the surfaces, but um, I'll, I'll get some footage of, of that. No one really wants to watch me scrape block though, so um, we'll get that done. So uh, all your plugs need to come out. This is the only one that's left. I haven't got to clean this side yet. Let me see if I can turn this with one hand. So you can see the bores of the cylinder. There's no uh, wear or if there was a carbon ring or a wear ring there you would need to knock that down before taking the pistons out but in this case um, wasn't needed uh, if, if you don't do that it can you can actually crack a ring land um, you see the blocks fairly greasy we're going to see if the, the oven cleaner won't take care of that I would caution against getting the uh, oven cleaner on anything uh, the bearing surfaces I'm not exactly sure how that would affect that. Um, in this case, I'm going to knock the cam bearings out. Uh, the main bearings were good, but since I um, ordered cam bearings, I, I did order a set of JEGS uh, main bearings and rod bearings. Uh, the rod bearings were $12.99. Uh, they are a king bearing, even though they're marketed by JEGS. And um, main bearings were $35. I thought it was was uh, money well spent since we're this far along. Uh, cam bearings were, I believe, $14.99, and they were definitely needed. The rods and mains, uh, not so much, but since I'm here, I'm um, going to replace them as long as the clearance uh, clearances go uh, correctly. I will be checking that with plastic gauge. I'm going to get these out of the block before I clean it, and I'm going to lay them out and label them with a Sharpie uh, the way they came out of the block in case the clearances on the new bearings are too tight or too loose I can put these back in here because I know these are right as I checked them before they came out of the motor um, then you see here I just taken a uh, wire brush on the grinder and then the little hand brushes I showed earlier and kind of went over the surface a little bit uh, needs a little bit more attention then we'll degrease it and um, then with the, the brake parts cleaner and let that dry good and and we'll paint that all that will be after we hone it so what we're going to do right now is get this spun around take the cam bearings out hone all the cylinders to put a little cross hatch in them uh, and clean them up good uh, so so that the, the the bores will will maintain oil and lubricate the cylinders properly and the rings will seat as they should then after we get that honed again i'm going to take the bearings out um, probably before before i come back on camera here but then i've got an engine brush set from jegs as well as you see the bearings here they're just your your jegs bearings i can can uh, show those a little better when i put them in got an engine brush set um, you need one of these uh, epi pins don't worry about those those uh, in case i get beast on don't ask why they're in the engine brush set but you see you've got these long brushes to go through the old galley you're going to need some dawn dish soap which i don't have out here and some hot water um, i think that pretty much covers everything we're using tool wise today uh, if i see anything else that comes up as uh, uh as i come across it i'll uh, let you know i'm gonna get these bearings out and I'll show you uh, putting the cam bearings back in. 
Okay, I'm back. We're running out of daylight, so let's speed this up. I'm trying to get this plug out here to the old galley. You're going to need a punch and some sort of little needle nose pliers. Uh, alternative method, if you had a slide hammer, which I don't, would be to drill a hole in the center, put that screw in there, and then pull that out. You might could even do that with channel locks. We're going to try the punch method. Um, so just start on the upper edge. So you're trying to get this to pivot around. Tap it on in there. You see the plug went in there. Can't fall anywhere. Grab it with needle nose and pull it out. And voila. That allows you to get the brush through there and uh, clean that hole out. Also, it will allow you to knock the uh, barbell out of the back of the block with a long screwdriver, wooden dowel, whatever you can find. Alright, next step will be honing it. Alright, I'm back. First step in the honing process, we've got a, a pot of warm water with some Dawn dish soap in it. Got this engine bore brush. I'm going to clean the bores up, get any oil film out of them. Um, like at the bottom, there's some caked on oil. I don't want that to clog up my honing stone. We'll just repeat that for all of the cylinders. So not too interesting, but I just thought I would show you. We're going to let that sit a few minutes and wipe it out with your shop towels. And then um, rinse it out with some more soap and water. Uh, dry that, and I'll bring you back in when I start to hone it. Well, the bad news is the honing video is gone. We don't know what happened. But anyway, thanks for watching, y'all. Please subscribe. Watch the next video. See y'all later. Bye now.